But Grissom wasn't the only Apollo critic to meet with a suspicious and untimely death. Thomas Ronald Barron was a safety inspector during Apollo 1's construction. After the fire, Barron testified before Congress that the Apollo program was in such disarray that the United States would never make it to the moon. He claimed his opinions made him a target. Has there been any pressure on you by NASA? Uh, nothing. We were, uh, my wife and I were somewhat harassed at home when the first thing broke some time back, but uh, it's, it's going away now. As part of his testimony, Barron submitted a 500-page report detailing his findings. There was a real fear that the program could be stopped dead in his tracks. Then exactly one week after he testified, Barron's car was struck by a train. Barron, his wife, and stepdaughter were killed instantly. I believe that Thomas Ronald Barron was murdered because he had the truth to tell about the Apollo project. Barron's report mysteriously disappeared, and to this day, it has never been found. But the Apollo program continued, and so did the string of untimely deaths. Between 1964 and 1967, a total of 10 astronauts lost their lives in freak accidents. These deaths accounted for an astonishing 15% of NASA's astronaut corps. To keep something that's a lie wrapped up and covered over, you've got to eliminate all the people that can talk about it. Could the government have gone this far to pull off such an elaborate hoax? NASA says it's impossible. There were probably a quarter of a million people who were directly involved in the Apollo program and another half a million people beyond that. Three quarters of a million people can't keep a secret like that. That's just not going to happen. But Bart Sabrell insists that most NASA employees knew nothing of the deception. Very few people at NASA knew. The thing is so departmentalized. You got the person building the bolts in Houston or doing this in Seattle or doing this in Florida. No one knows the full picture. So, you know, you had no one seen the full picture of anything except a handful of people. If the conspiracy theorists are right, and only a few people knew the whole story, then the truth may remain buried forever. When we return, could the astronauts have survived the deadly radiation of space? Getting them past the radiation belt would have been impossible. And a Russian cosmonaut breaks his silence when conspiracy theory returns. Suspicious deaths. Evidence of doctored photos and flags waving in the airless vacuum of space are not the only reasons to doubt that we ever went to the moon. Some say the astronauts could never even have survived the trip. The reason why they couldn't go to the moon is because of a phenomenon that few people know about called the Van Allen radiation belts. 500 miles above the Earth, these bands of intense radiation surround our planet and are thousands of miles thick. Any human being traveling through the Van Allen belt would have been uh, rendered either extremely ill or actually killed by the radiation within a short time thereafter. Other than the Apollo missions, no other manned space flight has attempted to pass through this deadly radiation. Every manned mission in history, Gemini, Mercury, Skylab, the space shuttle, has been below the radiation belt. All except going to the moon. To protect the astronauts, the capsule would have needed six feet of lead shielding, according to physicist Ralph Rene. Obviously, the only shielding they had was the literally paper-thin outer hull of aluminum and their suits consisting of glass fiber, some aluminum fibers, and silicon rubber. It's very interesting concerning radiation that the astronauts were protected by a thin film of aluminum when here on Earth they put a lead shield on us when they take a dental x-ray. 
Some theorize that if the Van Allen belts didn't kill the astronauts, even deadlier doses of radiation deeper in space would have. Violent explosions in the sun called magnetic storms flood space with intense radioactivity. A magnetic storm will come along and that can increase the intensity of the radiation belts by maybe a thousand times above what it was before. According to Rene, the Apollo 16 mission coincided with one of the sun's most intense storms ever recorded. Around the rotating sun came this immense flare, the biggest one of the 20th century. It went on for three or four days, all the while it's slowly rotating around. Although the effects of radiation are horrific, ranging from hair loss to cancer to death, the solar flares had no adverse effect on the Apollo 16 crew. NASA had another problem, and one is that the moon's surface is totally inhospitable to man. If you do it in the dark, and that includes any part of the shadow of, of, the, of the spacecraft itself, the temperatures go down to 250 degrees below zero. In the sun, the temperatures go up to 250 degrees above zero. Rene also theorizes that the astronauts' liquid-cooled spacesuits could not have provided sufficient protection from the intense heat and radiation. But NASA maintains that this hypothesis is wrong. The claim that uh, the radiation on the lunar surface would have um, incapacitated or hurt the astronauts, and it's equal parts bad science and, and, and a bad understanding of how we went about designing the equipment. The uh, spacesuits that they wore were incredibly tough and uh, very resilient to lots of different things. If those suits do what NASA says they can do, then I want to see them suit up a guy or two, put him into Three Mile Island, the, the pit there that's still hot, and have them clean up the mess. But they can't and they don't. The fact remains that no Apollo astronaut has ever suffered a serious illness from a trip to the moon. Could this be because they never left the safety of Earth's atmosphere in the first place? This is the main reason why the Russians never really intended to send the men to the moon. Was it the fear of lethal radiation that caused the Russians to abandon their plans to go to the moon? According to one of their chief cosmonauts, it was certainly a factor. Of course, we were worried to go out into the unknown of space. Of course, we were fearful. We had no idea how a human would be affected by the radiation. We suspected that possibly the radiation could even penetrate through the craft itself. Are the deadly perils of space proof that NASA faked the Apollo missions? To this day, the Russians have never sent a man to the moon. And we have no plans to return. A final word when conspiracy theory continues. theories and explanations. Do you believe it's possible for our government to perpetrate such an incredible hoax? Is it conceivable that with its 40 billion dollar price tag, the Apollo program was nothing more than the most expensive movie ever made? It is my personal belief, and I totally believe this after all the years of research I've done on this, that NASA never landed man on, a man on the moon. I would say that anybody who believes that we did not go to the moon is an absolute nut. Anyone that wants to call me a kook or a nut or a crackpot, they're welcome to do that. But they're also welcome to go examine the evidence, which is everywhere. Bottom line, the United States went to the moon in the 1960s and the 1970s. End of story. Is there any way to put this controversy to rest once and for all? The only thing the experts agree upon is that the answer is a quarter of a million miles away. If NASA truly landed on the moon, remnants of the six successful Apollo missions would have been left behind. The base structures of the limbs, 
the abandoned lunar rovers, even the American flags would still be standing at each landing site.